1942, near Welshpool, Wales, a Royal Air Force test flight was underway over the hills. Inside, the aircraft sat one of Britain's most brilliant engineers, Alan Dower Blumlein. He wasn't a soldier nor a famous commander, yet his inventions were about to change how wars were fought and how the entire world heard sound. Moments later, the plane went down. What was lost that day was more than a life. It was the mind that helped shape radar, television, and modern audio as we know it. To understand who Bloomline was, we must go back to the early 1930s. Britain was still recovering from the Great Depression. The war hadn't yet begun, but technological rivalry was already building. While most engineers worked on aircraft or weapons, Bloomline's genius lived in invisible waves, electrical signals, sound, and light. He worked for EMI, Electrical and Musical Industries, a company known for making gramophones and records. But inside its laboratories, Bloomline was pushing the boundaries of communication and electronics. In 1931, at just 28 years old, Bloomline filed one of the most revolutionary patents in audio history, stereo sound. The idea was simple but radical. Instead of a single sound channel, use two to recreate depth and space. He even demonstrated it by walking around a stage while recording his voice, proving that listeners could hear him move from left to right. It was decades ahead of its time. This wasn't just about music. It was about realism. He wanted machines to capture and reproduce life exactly as it sounded. Blumlein's brilliance didn't stop there. He was also working on television systems when few believed in them. He developed methods to synchronize sound and picture, something modern broadcasting depends on to this day. His name appeared on over 120 patents before he turned 39, yet very few in Britain even knew his face. That's because when World War II began, Blumline quietly shifted from entertainment technology to national defense. By 1939, Britain faced a terrifying threat, the German Luftwaffe. The country's survival depended on detecting enemy aircraft before they reached the coast. That meant radar. Blumline joined a secret division under Sir Robert Watson Watt, the man behind Britain's radar network. But Blumline's assignment wasn't to invent radar itself. It was to make it accurate, mobile, and deadly. The system in development was codenamed H2S, a revolutionary airborne radar that could see the ground below. Unlike earlier radar, which only detected aircraft, H2S used microwave signals to map terrain, allowing bombers to navigate and target cities even through clouds or darkness. It was the first ground-mapping radar in history. Blumlein's role was to turn theory into working hardware. His experience with high-frequency circuits and signal processing made him indispensable. He designed a series of circuits that allowed the radar to produce sharper, more reliable images an engineering challenge that had defeated dozens before him. By 1941, prototypes of H2S were being tested in secrecy. The system used the cavity magnetron, a powerful new device that generated microwave pulses. Britain's survival depended on it, but so did the success of its bombers over Europe. Bloomline's lab at EMI became one of the few places capable of building and refining this complex technology. Every flight test was high risk. Engineers and scientists often joined air crews to observe results firsthand. On June 7, 1942, Bloomline boarded a Halifax bomber to test the H2S radar system in real conditions. With him were several colleagues and RAF personnel. The radar worked, but somewhere near the Welsh border, the aircraft went out of control and crashed. Everyone on board was killed instantly. Britain lost one of its greatest minds that day, but his work didn't die with him. The radar system he helped perfect would soon prove decisive in turning the tide of war. After the crash near Welshpool, British authorities immediately classified the incident. Even within the Ministry of Defence, few were allowed to know what project those men had been testing. 
The H-2S radar was one of Britain's most closely guarded secrets, a device that could change the outcome of the air war. For security reasons, Alan Dower Blumline's death was kept quiet, and his name disappeared from wartime reports. Only his family and a handful of engineers knew what he had truly accomplished. Months before his death, Blumline had been working under extreme pressure. The Luftwaffe's bombing campaign, the Blitz, had devastated London and several industrial cities. British bombers retaliated, but without radar, their night raids often missed their targets. The Air Ministry demanded a system that could guide bombers to precise points on the map, regardless of weather or visibility. That system was H-2S. The challenge was enormous. Radar signals at that time used relatively long wavelengths, which made accurate imaging impossible. Blumline proposed integrating the newly developed Cavity Magnetron, a microwave generator capable of producing signals 10,000 times more precise. But the Magnetron was unstable, overheating, and failing during tests. Blumline's circuit innovations stabilized the device, allowing it to operate continuously without distortion, a crucial breakthrough that made H2S viable. He also created an ingenious scanning mechanism that synchronized radar pulses with the aircraft's motion, translating echoes into an image on a cathode ray tube. To the operator, it looked like a glowing map, rivers, coastlines, and even cities appearing as patterns of light. For the first time, crews could see through clouds, fog, and night. By early 1942, the RAF began testing the system in bomber operations. Pilots reported that the radar display allowed them to navigate and identify landmarks even during heavy German countermeasures. It gave Britain an edge that no other nation possessed at that time. Blumlein, however, was never content with success. He constantly redesigned circuits, improved display clarity, and refined magnetron efficiency. Colleagues described him as relentless, not for fame, but for precision. He often worked overnight in EMI's Hayes Laboratories, sketching diagrams on scraps of paper. To him, every improvement meant saving more lives. The secrecy around his work was so strict that even within EMI, few engineers knew the full purpose of the project. It operated under military code names, and only a select team of scientists had access to complete schematics. Yet, despite the secrecy, word of the technology's potential spread among the scientific elite. The government saw it as a turning point in modern warfare, a leap that would keep Britain ahead of Germany's radar capabilities. After Blumlein's death, the H-2S program continued, but progress slowed. His team had to rebuild portions of the system from his notes and unfinished designs. Many of his schematics were hand-drawn in a style only he could fully interpret. Engineers later admitted that his death set the project back by months, if not longer. Still, by early 1943, the RAF officially deployed H-2S-equipped bombers over Europe. The first operational mission took place in January over Hamburg. The results were dramatic. Bombers could now find their targets in total darkness. Radar-guided bombing became the new standard of precision for the Allies. Yet Blumlein's contribution remained unknown to the public. When Britain declassified radar developments years later, his name barely appeared in reports. The scientists who survived the war often spoke of him as the man who would have changed electronics entirely if he had lived. After the war, Many of Alan Dower Blumlin's inventions resurfaced in unexpected places, from recording studios to television sets and radar systems around the world. Though his death in 1942 had silenced a rising genius, the technologies he left behind became the foundation of modern electronics. Yet, for years, almost no one outside of a few scientific circles knew his name. Before joining the secret radar projects, 
Blumlein had already changed how people experienced sound. His 1931 stereo patent contained over 70 detailed claims, not just the concept of two-channel audio, but also the methods to record, transmit, and reproduce it. He described techniques for microphone placement, disc cutting, and even film synchronization, predicting almost every aspect of modern surround sound decades before it reached the public. His work at EMI's Hayes Laboratories wasn't limited to sound. During the late 1930s, he was part of a small group working on the 405-line television system, the world's first high-definition broadcast standard. While most nations still relied on crude, flickering mechanical systems, Blumlein and his team pushed for full electronic scanning. He solved the problem of syncing sound and image, ensuring that voices matched lip movement, an innovation still used in modern broadcasting. Blumlein's combination of creativity and mathematical precision made him a rare figure. He wasn't just an inventor, he was a complete systems thinker. He understood that sound, vision, and electromagnetic waves all shared one core element, signal transmission. Whether it was a radar pulse reflecting off a target or a note played in a concert hall, Blumlein saw it all as information to be captured, processed and reproduced. When Britain began organising its wartime radar programme, this ability made him invaluable. He bridged the gap between pure physics and engineering practicality. Colleagues said that when others saw a schematic, Blumlein saw the full behaviour of electrons in motion. He was also known for a peculiar working habit. He spoke quietly, scribbled equations furiously, and would vanish for hours to test ideas, often returning with complete circuit designs that worked on the first attempt. Even though radar became his primary focus, he continued improving television circuits during the early years of the war. Some of his wartime designs later influenced post-war broadcasting equipment. Many television engineers in the 1950s unknowingly worked on systems that contained principles Blumlein had designed nearly 20 years earlier. But it wasn't only electronics that carried his mark. The H2S radar system he helped develop became the blueprint for later airborne radars used in both military and civilian aviation. The ability to map terrain from above, something that began as a wartime necessity evolved into peacetime applications like weather radar and early navigation systems. Despite this vast legacy, there was no public recognition. In the years immediately following the war, information about radar remained classified under the Official Secrets Act. Engineers who worked on H2S could not speak about their contributions. By the time secrecy was lifted in the late 1940s, Blumlein's name had faded from public memory. Others received honours and medals, while his achievements remained locked inside patent archives and declassified reports. Those who had worked with him remembered his modesty. He never sought publicity. One colleague described him as a man who made no effort to be remembered because he expected to keep on contributing. His wife, Doreen, later said that Alan's only real pride came from seeing a design perform exactly as intended. It would take decades before Britain acknowledged what had been lost in that 1942 crash. As the electronics revolution accelerated through the 1950s and 60s with stereophonic records, colour television and radar-guided jets, experts began to realise that one man's fingerprints were on nearly all of it. For more than 20 years after his death, Alan Dower Blumlein's name remained almost unknown outside small technical communities. His patents sat quietly in archives. His contributions to radar stayed locked under government secrecy. When the war ended, those who had worked with him moved on to new projects. Radar networks, radio broadcasting, early computers, all built on the foundation he helped create. By the 1950s, stereo sound was finally reaching the public, but few realized that the concept had been invented in Britain decades earlier. American engineers developed stereo record players and films with dual-channel sound, unaware that Blumlein had already solved those problems in 1931. 
It wasn't until his patent was rediscovered in the archives that experts realized how far ahead of his time he truly was. Every stereo recording, from orchestral music to cinematic sound design, still relies on his principles. In television, too, his influence quietly endured. The synchronization systems he designed became the standard for nearly every analog broadcast chain in the world. Even the way early cathode ray tubes displayed images borrowed directly from his scanning and timing techniques, his thinking unified audio and visual signals into one consistent framework, the very idea that made modern multimedia possible. Recognition, when it finally came, was slow and understated. In 1945, three years after the crash, he was posthumously awarded the gold medal of the Institution of Electrical Engineers. But there was little press coverage. His radar work remained classified, and public discussion focused on military commanders, not scientists. It wasn't until the late 1970s that his story began to reappear in journals and documentaries about radar development. Declassified documents revealed that the loss of Blumlein in 1942 had been a major setback to Britain's radar effort. His technical drawings and notebooks, recovered from the wreckage, were studied and preserved by EMI engineers. They showed that he had already begun designing next-generation radar circuits that would have made the H2S system smaller, lighter and more efficient. Some of these designs wouldn't be implemented until years after the war, proving how advanced his thinking was. His family continued to campaign for proper recognition. In 1999, nearly six decades after his death, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, IEE, named him one of the most influential engineers of the 20th century. A blue heritage plaque was later placed at his former EMI laboratory in Hayes, marking the site where he invented stereo sound and laid the groundwork for radar's future. In 2015, the British government formally recognized his wartime contribution with a posthumous award of the Defence Medal presented to his surviving relatives. For many, it was symbolic, too late to reach him but an acknowledgement that Britain's victory in the air owed much to a man who never flew combat missions. Today, every radar-equipped aircraft, every stereo recording, every synchronized film carries a trace of his legacy. Alan Dower Blumlein embodied a type of genius that rarely seeks attention, one defined by precision, purpose, and the quiet pursuit of perfection. He died at 38 but left behind more than 120 patents spanning radar, television, telecommunications and audio engineering. His ideas connected sound and vision long before the digital age, proving that even in war, innovation born from curiosity can outlast destruction. Alan Dower Blumlein didn't just help Britain win the radar war, he helped invent the way humanity experiences the world.